All right, it's YouTube uh, review time. Uh, All Japan Pro Wrestling's uh, Pro Wrestling uh, Love, two, uh, not 2011, Volume 12. This is from, uh, where is it from? Tokyo Ryoku Kogyuken. I always get that messed up. Uh, 8,000 fans, uh, allegedly. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe. They always inflate numbers in Japan, though. Wrestling's not exactly its heyday right now. Popularity in Japan. So, anyway, yeah, let's uh, get to the first match. Kazushi Miyamoto and Bushi versus uh, Yamato Hiroshi and Nakanawa Yasafumi. Uh, I don't know. I didn't hate this match. Uh, Bushi's kind of reminiscent of Rey Mysterio. Just, I don't know. I always find it strange that probably eight out of ten of the best luchadors in the world, come lucha style wrestlers or cruiserweight style wrestlers, come from Japan and not Mexico. Uh, Mexico has got like three aces and then like ten guys who botch every move, and WWE signs half the good ones anyway. So yeah, I feel bad for Mexico. Anyway, uh, yeah, basically uh, I'm saying Japan superior to Mexico in every way. Except for weather. Um, yeah, I don't know. This would have been better without uh, Miyamoto or uh, Naganawe. But whatever. Still, uh, still <laughs> twice as good as any no opener recently. Yeah, that's right. No shot. How? I, our second match was Suzuki Minoru versus Fuchi Masanabu. Oh, I feel bad for Fuji. <laughs> this, uh, this is a fun match, though. It was, uh, kind of nostalgic type of thing. Uh, yeah. For most guys, Fuji's age, stepping in and out of the bathtub is stepping into the danger zone. But uh, for Fuji, it's uh, standing in there with a killer like uh, Suzuki Minoru. And, uh, even at 56, uh, Fuji can still, you know, bring it somewhat. And he can take it. A hell of a lot of punishment. You got his ass beat. Guess who won this? <laughs> Alright, then we got a tag match between Tayo Ke Kea and uh, Takao Imori, the Axe Bomber, uh, against Joe Durbin and Rene Dupree. Sorry, I was killing this guy. Eh. Uh, All Japan deserves massive props for one thing to do this match. Using Blue Monday in their video package. That song's fucking awesome. And it's 80s and all, but it's still awesome. Um, yeah, I don't know if Rene Dupree does meth or hangs out with Jeff Hardy, but he's got some just awful tattoos. Uh, see that? He's really stupid. Um, but whatever. Uh, yeah, I just kind of get the feeling this match is just four individuals throwing in their own stuff instead of two teams, which. You get in most All Japan tag matches, unless it's All Asia. All Asia is the only tag tag division that matters in all. Sorry, no, I um, mean All Japan. All right, uh, then we got our vacant All Japan World Junior Championship match: Kondo Shuji versus Kai. Uh, this was extremely slow to start, at least for a juniors match. Uh, it got better as it went on. By no means was a match of the year uh, candidate uh, type of match. But uh, I don't know. This match went about 10, 12 minutes too long. But it was it was still pretty good for what it was, 68%. I mean, I know I'm kind of like jabbing at it, but it was actually a pretty good match overall. It's just, I don't know, not title worthy. All right, then we got the All Asia Tag Team Championship match, the one all of the. Uh, Non-Japanese fans definitely were looking forward to, probably them too. Uh, Sakamoto, Sakimoto Daisuke and Akobayashi Yuji, uh, versus, which I label, uh, yeah, strong BJ. I mean, that's the style, but I just like to call the team that. They're the champions. And they faced Soya Marabu and Sanada Saya. This is about 78% and the best match on the card, probably. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I like to call soya sauce because it's 
kind of cool. And Sauce is just a cool knight. I thought, yeah, it sounds badass. And uh, yeah, let's get to the actual match. Uh, I found it a little odd that Soyo is kind of the one isolated by uh, Second Oak. Was that found one? Uh, it's it's just a little weird when there's a guy who's barely passable as a heavyweight. Even I don't even know if he is in Sonata. And Soy is one that was kind of taking the double teams for five, six minutes, which I don't know, it was kind of dumb. But, eh, what are you gonna do? Uh, Sakamoto and Okubayashi definitely uh, controlled the majority of this match. Probably, I don't know, get 65, 70 percent. No, I, I think Soyo was the true star. He kind of showed it. He brought it. And he showed something a little different that he hadn't shown before. And I'm not. Yeah, I think they should push Soya. They're going to push Sonata down our throats, and it's not going to work, I don't think, as a heavyweight. Uh, you know, what are you going to do? Maybe someone's been listening to Noah's bookers. Uh, yeah, um... Uh, <sighs> So, B, strong B, BJ versus ES, the uh, final tag match, I assume, uh, of the year between those uh, four wrestlers, just um, wasn't quite as good as the other three matches. Um, I think it had something to do with the time, maybe, and it was, it was a little dragged up, but I don't know. It seems every match that was of any importance on this card was dragged out, so any title match. But, you know, what do you get? All right, then we got a, a very strange match. K1 heavyweight wrestling champions debut in wrestling. Funaki and Masakatsu versus Kyotoro, uh, 55 percent. Uh, just you know, the natural transition from uh, professional kickboxing to professional wrestling, right? What are you gonna do? Uh, I, I don't know if Funaki was thinking bring this guy in. Uh, I'm guessing you don't want to get kicked by him. He, he looks like he. Uh, doesn't have to pull punches, Goldberg, which could injure someone, Bret Hart. Uh, I don't think they should be doing that, but you know, this match was good when Funaki was whooping that ass. It seems like he actually got mad from getting kicked so hard, but whatever. Uh, the K1 guy was alright, and it was because of Funaki. Alright, then we got, uh, I believe it was a tag title match. I, maybe not. I don't know. I'm not even like, listening to this one because these belts don't matter. Great Muta and Ikenso versus Akibono and Hemarayoto, uh, aka. Oh my god, the ring's gonna explode. Uh, yeah, this is two gelatinous blobs with gas tanks the size of teacups pitted against an old man with bum knees and an uncoordinated psychopath. Uh, what could possibly go wrong? Uh, basically, let's say if Hema and. Uh, if Hama and the Sumo Boy had a show, it would be called Two and a Half Tons. Uh, time said that, if Kenso and Muto had a show, it would be called uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, I didn't expect much, and I got less. Uh, Muto came out in gear that can only be described as Kenso. I'm not saying he looked like Kenso, I'm just saying Kenso is crazy as fuck, so you got to use his name to describe something really crazy. Uh, that, this match is kind of like stepping into the Twilight Zone. Uh, the resting was horrible. I believe Hamma gassed. He was, Hamma was still gassed from the last <laughs> pro wrestling love show. I mean, that dude is out of shape. I mean, if you want to feel good about yourself and you haven't worked out for like a couple of years, uh, just look at Hamma. Fuck. This guy's an athlete, technically. Whatever. This match is so fucked up, it must have been booked by M. Night Shyamalan or Vince Russo. Um, yeah, the best part of this match was five minutes before it started when they played No Feelings by the Sex Pistols in the video. Good fucking song. Even if you don't like Sex Pistols, get you going. Alright, uh, then we had the uh, main event for the All Japan Triple Crown Championship. Nagata Yuji Challenger versus Suwama, obviously the champion. Uh, this match was kind of a slow burn. Uh, not exactly Nagata versus Suzuki pace, but uh, still very important in establishing Suwama further as a dominant champ. Which I mean, he kind of did that, but uh, I, I just love how they built the match around the backdrop hold. That's what I like the most. The in ring action itself is kind of secondary. And, um, 
the only way it possibly could work out is ending in a backdrop all one way or the other. And that's what it did. Uh, I think this match should have been 18 minutes instead it went something like 30. I mean, it was way too long. Uh, with, a faster with a faster pace, 18 minutes, 19 minutes, this could have been a serious match of the year contender. Uh, it's just a little too slow. I mean, I kind of like the guy working over Salama's arm for like 10 minutes but to get the, the uh, home crowd booing, but I don't know. Didn't seem overly worth it. All right, overall, I give the show 7 out of 10. Not too impressed, not disappointed. There was some good stuff, but it could have been so much better. That's the thing. It's like, I guess I was disappointed. It'd be like disappointed, being disappointed in a, or a family member or something. I expect so much more. Uh, definitely the All Asian Tag and the Triple Crown match were the best. And, uh, I think Sawam is in need of one, one more dominant performance in the 20 minutes and then build up Soya and he doesn't have to win but give them a match I guarantee you match of the year quality. Soya, Manabu, and Suwama. Guaranteed. Alright, uh, this has been my review and it's been weighted I, I believe. And uh, I suffered through parts of it for you guys, but you know, what else am I gonna do? Get a social life? Alright. Adios.